Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I'd like to call to order the October 24, 2023 meeting of the Portsmouth Port and Industrial Commission. Please. Yes. Good morning, uh, Ms. Allen. Present. Mr. Foster. Present. Mr. Hansen. Present. Ms. McSwain is absent. And Mr. Peterman. Present. I'm sure you have a quorum. Thank you. Yeah, before you, the minutes of the August 22nd, 2023 regular meeting. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Mr. Hanson? Yes. Vote is absent. Uh, Mr. Peter? Yes. Should the item is approved by a vote of four. Thank you. Uh, to be kind of moved down to old business. to uh, old business and your, your first item is a uh, update from the court of Virginia. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's happy October. Um, thank you to the PPIC for setting up that Fort uh, Harbor tour a few weeks ago. I thought that was a very informative time. I know those of us who took part in that uh, really gained a whole level of perspective when you get on the water twice, uh, seeing all these great, wonderful sites here in Portsmouth on the land. So uh, thank you to the PPIC uh, for that opportunity. Uh, one of the sites that we saw, or terminals that we were able to pass by there was uh, Portsmouth Marine Terminal. Um, and for any of you who've had the fortune of driving on the Western Freeway or going to the Midtown Tunnel over the past few days, you may have noticed uh, the arrival of the first components for the uh, Coastal Virginia Offshore Wind Project have arrived there at Portsmouth Marine Terminal. And those will be the monopiles. We mentioned that on the harbor tour when we were on the boat, but they are now here. Uh, offload went very smoothly. And uh, in fact, I know Brian also circulated uh, to the members of the PBIC an upcoming event this Friday. Uh, This is eight that arrived, so we have 168 to go. Um, pretty exciting. In addition to all the other elements that go into um, the project that Dominion Energy is constructing. So uh, it is a lot of hard work to bring us to this point. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done there at PMT, um, as you very well know and, and have seen and been part of uh, various announcements and, and seen various briefings from both myself and Dominion Energy. Uh, we continue to make substantive um, progress on the improvements there to really have a world-class staging port for offshore wind components. So we're about 60% complete um, on that project. Obviously, we completed a significant amount to hand over to Dominion Energy to receive the new load of monopiles this past week. So um, really hopeful that members of the PPIC can attend Friday's event um, uh, there at PMT to see firsthand uh, just the enormous size and scale of these uh, particular components that, again, the monopiles go into the seabed. So this is the foundation that the actual wind turbines are going to be constructed on. The port overall, uh, volumes continue to um, maybe reflect more of a uh, 2019 type of environment. Um, I think as you know, we see headlines in the economy and we know uh, what consumer spending has done, uh, volumes are still very strong in that we, we're, we're handling volumes uh, efficiently, uh, but definitely, um, you know, have begun to see sort of a leveling out, um, a normalization from what was about a two-year period of abnormal or accelerated growth there at the port. So um, we're very pleased with uh, a lot of the new business we've gained and, and retained, and, and we continue to provide uh, what is best in class service to our trucking community with sub 60-minute turn times there at the gate. Uh, as we, we march through this uh, this holiday peak season. One thing I did want to point out, and I'm going to end my remarks here shortly, um, for any of you who maybe attended the recent uh, State of the Region address uh, by, by Old Dominion University, um, something stood out in that report, and I, I just wanted to highlight. Um, they highlighted and discussed um, some of the employment growth that we've seen here in the region. Uh, and we, in Virginia, we're Go Region 5, and so 
they looked at port operations, logistics, and warehousing. Um, and I just want to highlight the fact that, you know, in that industry segment, which is in place here in Portsmouth, as well as throughout this region, there's been a 30% growth in the number of jobs over the past 10 years in that field. And that's that's really exciting when you think about, you know, what's come to Portsmouth in the past 10 years, like interchange, like lineage logistics, like Unis there on Wild Duck Lane being built as we speak. It all contributes to employment and really continuing to solidify the importance of warehousing distribution and logistics to our community. Um, and so I just, I wanted to point that out um, that even, you know, ODU um, and other third parties are recognizing the strength and the importance of the port and the port to uh, the profession of, of transportation and logistics. So um, I'm going to leave it there, uh, but happy to answer any questions or, or concerns from the commission. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank I appreciate you. it. I appreciate it as well. No problem. Next up, we have Brian discussing our waterfront industrial site tour, which was awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chair. Yes, it was. And um, just wanted to uh, thank the board for um, agreeing to, uh, to provide for the tour. Um, as uh, Mr. Gullickson had uh, shared with you, I think it was an excellent opportunity to see uh, many different uh, sites and industries on the, uh, the Portsmouth waterfront, including all of the activity occurring at the uh, Port of Virginia's terminals here in the city. But in addition to that, some you know privately owned and operated uh, industrial sites, um, including uh, as well the uh, Norfolk Naval Shipyard and a lot of the activity occurring around that. Um, you know, there is an incredible amount of industry taking place uh, along the Olympic River, and uh, a good portion of that is occurring here in Portland. So I thought it was really beneficial to get out on the water to see it from a different perspective. Um, perhaps that's something we can look to do annually going forward to you know, follow some of the uh, change in uh, use and um, increase in activity going forward. So uh, thank you for agreeing to do that. Um, I hope you found that beneficial. It was very educational. Very educational, yes. The VMA International Trade Symposium. Uh, again, just uh, wanted to extend uh, my gratitude uh, to the PPIC uh, once again for um, sponsoring the 2023 uh, International Trade Symposium. Um, it was a, um, a well attended um, conference uh, with representatives really um, from across the globe. Uh, in Norfolk uh, for the week to uh, hear about all the amazing things happening in our maritime uh, community. Um, you were a sponsor of a number of uh, different items, including the uh, evening reception, uh, the banquet. So thank you uh, to those who were in attendance for that. Um, very informative uh, discussions uh, throughout the conference. We had our staff uh, there for a number of those uh, panels. And um, a lot of takeaways, uh, but we did appreciate your sponsorship of the event. Uh, we had a lot of uh, conversations with uh, groups in the maritime industry. And I have to tell you, I heard a lot of positive remarks about Portsmouth and everything that's happening here. And I think that's attributable to the work that you all are doing. That's important. Okay. The Norfolk Naval Shipyard Southgate Annex update. Uh, Chair, I'm going to actually uh, ask uh, Vice Chair Peterman to give the board an update. He's uh, participated in some recent discussions with the representatives from the Naval Shipyard. So, uh, Mr. Peterman, if I can pass the baton. Sure. You know, on uh, a week ago, uh, Councilman Hugo and I met with Captain Greg, who is the new base support officer at the uh, Norfolk Naval Shipyard. He just showed up there. So, you know, kind of a learning curve on his part is to. Uh, to where we were, and, and Patrick, who's been there for a long time, and Captain Greg just came from being the base support officer at Little Creek, so, and he said he's here on a two-year assignment, and from there, here he's going to retire, so uh, that's a little bit on him. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, the, the laydown of the shipyard for all this effort that they got in, in investing money and, and whatever and whatever, and they still haven't come up with, you know, what they need to do for a laydown area, and they and Captain Hugo, or, or I'm sorry, Captain Greg also said, you know, said that they're thinking about themselves, you know, in this in this effort to uh, reconstruction of the shipyard to uh, 
to lease out to some of the uh, businesses uh, some of the land that that we weren't really interested in. Uh, and then we, he he asked if he could have Brian and he you know take a tour of of the of the land down there at the uh, Burgess Point uh, land that we the PPIC own. And he was talking about a land swap, you know, but uh, you know, that might be overcome by events as well. But uh, yeah, because he's not familiar with Burton's Point at all, and he really hasn't really toured the uh, Southgate properties, you know. And uh, and then we talked about uh, it's still, you know, there's a hazardous, there's a big ammo locker down there that's uh, you know, they have that uh, what they call ESQD waiver for. There. So there's certain things that when they relocate that, they still need to have the. Uh, the waiver because there's explosives and some alarms and other things that are there that uh, that they need to talk about. And, and Councilman Hugo, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so I'll just add that um, the base support officer's name is Captain Greg Benton. So B E N T O N is his last name. And it's two G's on Greg, he says. So we you try to send them an email and you forget the second G, it doesn't make it. Thank you so much for that update. Oh, and we agreed to meet monthly still, even though, you know, so we even, and we asked if Brian would put that on the schedule. Yes, and um, in addition to that, they had uh, reached out um, yesterday, I believe uh, Thursday, uh, Captain Benton will be. Uh, a touring the site, uh, so I will try and uh, meet with them out there. I, I know that um, there was a desire, I think, uh, on behalf of the uh, commission uh, to have some of the uh, board members who have not had an opportunity to get out there to tour the facility as well. Uh, so work to coordinate that okay. uh, perhaps at a later date um, so that everybody can lay eyes on the property, walk it, and see exactly what it is that we're discussing. I know we've had it. We have it now on the screen, but um, it's one thing to see the aerial, but another. Uh, it that, person. Yes, and I think it's um, it's uh, certainly something when you walk it, you can understand the condition, the area, and uh, you know potential for uh, use of the property. So uh, we will work to coordinate that, um, perhaps in November. Sure. All right, moving on to new business. Uh, Madam Chair, we do not have any new business items. Uh, however, uh, we do have uh, some items for discussion in a uh, closed meeting, and I do believe that uh, Vice Chair Peterman has a uh, resolution to do so. Chair. Yeah. Madam Chair, I, uh, I move to go into closed uh, meeting pursuant to Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3711-8.3. For the purpose of discussing the disposition of real property for discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body specifically regarding the disposition of 3920 and 3930 Perkins Point Road. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Salen. Yeah. Mr. Foster. Yes. Mr. Hansen. Yes. Ms. McSwain. Yes. And Mr. Peterman. Yes. Uh, we are down closed session. I hereby move that each commissioner certify that to the best of his or her knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and two, only such public business matters as I, as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, considered, and closed meeting just concluded. We have a motion and a, I need a second. Second, sir. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Mr. Hansen? Yes. Ms. McSplain? Yes. Mr. Peterman? Yes. Thank Chair, you. the item is adopted by a vote of nine to zero. Thank you. Um, do we have any items submitted by commissioners? Seeing none, report back. Uh, Chair, we do not have any uh, report backs for you uh, this month. Okay. All right. Anything for the good of the people? Hearing none, 
Thank you so much. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Meeting is adjourned.